Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, today I have brought forward you an interesting way of proving the thin lens formula that we study under JE syllabus and NCRT also, right? So the two formula that you could see on the left side of your screen that we are going to look at is the usual 1 by V minus 1 by U equal to 1 by F and also the lens maker formula which is 1 by F is equal to uh, refractive index minus 1 into 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2 with the proper sign convention that we need to consider. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and this is slightly different from what we are usually given in the textbooks. Okay, so uh, it would be a nice way to understand it and we'll use an application problem on this also. So for this what we would be doing is uh, we would be trying to actually proving the lens makers formula using the thin prism deviation okay so a, a simple uh, revision of that concept would be a thin lens if you have a light ray which is near normal incidence that means the angle of incidence should be very close to zero and uh, that will start deviating by an angle delta which is given by mu minus one into alpha where alpha is the small angle that the prism has and the deviation is always towards the base if the outside surrounding is vacuum so this is something that we all know and the derivation is there in your textbooks you should be understanding this so we'll use this concept in moving ahead in steps okay so we'll do one by one and each and every step of this would be a problem in itself and a theoretical understanding required for your je okay so the first step that we are going to look at is right in order to um, represent the convex lens i've used this particular symbol so even though the derivation i am going to right now do is for convex lens i think you all understand you can anyway do it for even concave lens so i've chosen a convex lens okay so if there is a light ray which is parallel to this white line is the principal axis right if there is a ray which is parallel to the principal axis and this h is very small then it's called paraxial rays okay so those paraxial rays after refraction will go to a point where the distance from the lens is called focus or the focal length okay and the angle of deviation is represented as delta okay so you could see this delta is small if h is small then this delta if you return in this right angle triangle you could directly write delta value is equal to h by f it's very simple understanding so you could say that if i had sent another parallel ray which is at a lower height h by definition it also should go to the same focal length see that is the understanding of focal length any ray which is parallel as long as it's very small height ray then it should go to the same point so you could say that if i had changed the h f should remain same which means the delta should differ right so you could see that if i had drawn another ray like this it would actually deviate by a different value right so it's h is directly related to delta so these two are directly related f is same for all parallel rays so that's what i've written here so remember this we'll recall this later okay step two here in step two we are now not going to compare two parallel rays last time we compared two parallel rays at two different heights now we are going to compare two rays which are definitely not parallel but hitting the same point okay so i chose a point where incidence can happen now imagine there is a blue ray hitting that point and also a red ray this red ray is the same as this one okay it deviates by angle delta but the blue ray i claim also should deviate by an angle delta itself so which means any rays as long as they are near normal incident okay near normal this angle should be small this angle can't be 30 degrees okay so it should be very small i'm claiming at any point it hits they actually deviate by the same angle okay so why is that so okay so let's try to investigate a bit closer and this is a concept in itself you should realize that in any um, convex lens which is I, i've taken an animation of an actual convex lens so if two rays that have drawn the blue and red wala here right so at this particular point as they hit this particular place now you should realize that these two rays think that this hitting point you could consider that this is a small part of a thin prism so imagine this part is cut out like i shown and if i had drawn a tangent it these two tangents would have met at different well, at value of angle alpha uh, you should realize that different places you could consider different prisms so uh, it's like a variable angled prism so for this position uh, this angle prism should be considered so we all know that for any uh, ray uh, the formula of mu minus 1 into alpha that i used in the previous page should be applicable and that is the reason for the claim that the two rays should actually deviate by the same angle so what does that tell you uh, it concludes two important things as we move up from the principal axis 
uh, the value of alpha increases. You could see that if I had picked this piece and hit two rays at this place, the prism would have a greater angle alpha, right? So alpha increases and therefore if alpha increases, the value of angle of deviation also increases. But at the same alpha, that means two different rays hitting the same position, they deviate by the same delta. So this is the second step of our derivation. Okay, so let's move to step three. Step three is a familiar one to our NCRT uh, readers. Okay, so uh, this is the way we prove one by V minus one by U. So you have a ray from the object at a distance, object distance X hits this point and then deviates and then comes to the image distance Y. If this angle and this angle alpha and beta are very small angles, that is true for paraxial consideration, then the angle of deviation between the rays would be alpha plus beta, exterior angle of a triangle. So the value of this alpha plus beta, if you remember, is the value of delta, that is the deviation. So we already saw that the delta from step one is H by F, okay? And alpha here is H by X, and beta here is h by y. So I just substituted for each of these deviations, this number. So h gets canceled and you end up getting this. And if I apply sign convention for x and y, I end up getting this. So this is actually nothing. Step three is something very familiar. Step four is very important. So in step four, we are going to derive lens maker formula uh, using the step one and step two's deviation and uh, ideas, okay? So, and we have to consider that each part of this is like a prism in its own. You cut at one place, you will get one particular angle. As you move up, the angle of the prism increases and the deviation increases. So let's try to draw this diagram, okay? So imagine that uh, you have a principal axis here for this particular convex lens that I have taken and object is placed here. You could see that this red ray refracts twice and goes to this. So even though I've drawn this thick, remember this is a thin lens. So all of this is like a point. Please understand that. So the object ray goes to this position and refracts and then comes to this being image. So just concentrate on the red ray. Those are light rays. The ones that I've drawn in yellow are the normals drawn at the points of incidence. Okay, so at this place, if I were to draw the normal to this surface, this would be that normal. Okay, right. And at this place where the red ray hit, there is another normal that I have drawn like this. Okay, so wherever the normals to that particular place hit, I think that is called center of curvature. So this is C2 and this normal as it goes, this would be C1. You could say this is the radius of curvature. Okay, so this is center of curvature. So yellow ones are the normals, red ones are the actual light rays. And if I had drawn a tangent at that place, you, you all understand that the tangent and normal should be at 90 degrees to each other. So this tangent makes the small angled prism at this particular place. Imagine this is a cutout. This is like a small angled prism where the angle of this prism, I'm instead of written, writing it as alpha, because alpha was used here, I've written it as capital A. So the deviation suffered by this entire ray, can I write it as delta equal to mu minus one into A, right? So that you have written on the right hand side. So we also know that the value of delta should be H by F, right? So height H assume in this direction. Remember this all is one point. You can consider this height as H. So the value of delta should be H by F. Whereas the value of capital A, I'll find it from the geometry of the situation. So listen carefully to this. There is a triangle here. Okay, there's a triangle here, right, which I can consider as a quadrilateral. Can you see it? instead of considering triangle, just imagine concentrate on the white one, another white one here, there's a yellow normal and there's a yellow normal. You could see that this is a closed quadrilateral. Okay, so with 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here, which means if these two are 90 degrees, right, and then you should end up having these two also sum up to the uh, value of 180 degrees. So you can say this angle should be equal to uh, the value of 180 minus A, okay? So this value, which is 180 minus A, we should realize uh, can be used in this triangle. Can you see this? This triangle, yellow triangle, okay? So just imagine the angle made by these normals here is phi one and this normal here is phi two, sorry, this is phi one and this is phi two. So yellow triangle in which I already saw this is 180 minus A, some of the three angles should be equal to 180. So 180 minus A plus phi one plus phi two equal to 180. Then the value of this capital A can be written as phi one 
plus phi 2 slightly difficult but i think a very satisfying result that the angle between the tangents here is equal to some of the angles made by the normals with the principal axis so very decent result you end up getting here so that capital a i'll substitute here h by f is equal to mu minus 1 into capital a which is phi 1 plus phi 2 now what is phi 1 phi 1 is again this is h remember all of this is one point h divided by this entire distance it's a nice small triangle that you have here so the phi 1 is equal to h divided by this distance what is this distance this is the radius of curvature for the c2 that is h by r2 then phi 1 similarly is h by r1 so you can cancel h everywhere you end up getting 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 for convex lens you get 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 that is the result you end up getting so uh, i've used the radius of curvatures capital r1 and capital r2 and then when you supply the sign convention to these so r1 is actually positive so you'll keep r1 as it is r2 is actually negative so you change that to minus r2 if you had done this entire thing in concave lens you realize concave lens the rays go up that is reason because you can visualize that the prism there would be in this fashion where the base would be on the other direction so that's the one of the reasons why the deviation would be a divergent one in case of concave lens so this is the result and slightly fun way i'm not saying this is a popular way but this is a nice uh, bit of uh, understanding that you can have more importantly the reason for taking this up is in future step one and step two can themselves be a questions in the je exams what happens if two different parallel rays hit will they deviate similarly answer is no if two uh, non-parallel rays hit the same point will they deviate by same amount answer is yes so these are the two important standpoints that you need to understand okay so um, application problem for this is the uh, pathfinder final challenge your understanding question which is also part of our pathfinder solution series that i have started so there have been an announcement made regarding this how uh, frequent posting of videos that i'll be doing now onwards for pathfinder because olympiads are nearer i made an announcement video on this uh, pathfinder series and also olympiad workout series so all those links are in the description and you can go and please go through that i have given resources for the olympiads also what uh, books you are supposed to follow how, what kind of olympiad series i am going to post right so i'll be posting a lot of previous inpho ipho apho question paper solutions also aits announcement i had made so a lot of announcements in the recent times so uh, this would be our uh, video for the next one where i'll give you the solution so a part of what we did in step one to four would be utilized in solving this tricky but a very simple problem okay so even though this is challenge your understanding you will see once you understand the way i did the solution you'll get it very fast okay so it will be one or two steps for sure okay so thanks for watching like share and subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video